Okay, I'm going to pick up where we left off this afternoon in class. All right. The sun was rising for the third time since we put to sea when the fish started to circle. So remember, the fish is circling. Okay, he's holding on to the line. And um, he's trying to pull it in. The fish is finally tiring. So he's trying, as the fish circles around his boat, he's following it around. He could not see by the slant of the line that the fish was circling. It was too early for that. He just felt the faint slackening of the pressure of the line, and he commenced to pull on it gently with his right hand. It tightened as always, but just when he reached the point where it would break, line began to come in. He was to pull his fish closer. He slipped his shoulders and head from under the line and began to pull in line steadily and gently. He used both of his hands in a swinging motion and tried to do the pulling as much as he could with his body and his legs. His old legs and shoulders pivoted with the swinging of the pulling. So he's pulling in and trying to get this fish closer to his little boat. It is a very big circle, he said, but he is circling. Then the line would not come in anymore and he held it until he saw the drops jumping from it in the sun. Then it started out and the old man knelt down and let it go grudgingly back into the dark water. He's making the far part of a circle now, he said. I must hold all I can, he thought. The stream will shorten his circle each time. Perhaps in an hour I will see him. Now I once convinced him, convince him, and then I must kill him. But the fish kept on circling slowly, and the old man who went was wet with sweat and tired deep into his bones two hours later. This is going on for hours now. Remember, he's an old man. Yes, he's older than me, okay? And he's fighting with this fish, struggling, but you know, remember all those traits of a Hemingway hero, and he's still staying with him. But the circles were much shorter now, and from the way the line slanted, he could tell the fish had risen steadily while he swam. For an hour, the old man had seen had been seeing black spots before his eyes, and the sweat salted his eyes and salted the cut over his eye and on his forehead. Remember, he cut himself and he was bleeding. Okay, and the black spots. He's just he's been at this now. If he's going to his third day, fighting with this fish, struggling with this fish, and. You know, he's an old man, and he's hungry, and he's tired, he's exhausted physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. He was not afraid of the black spots. They were normal at the tension that he was pulling on the line. Twice, though, he had felt faint and dizzy, and that had worried him because he's afraid he might pass out. I could not fail myself and die on a fish like this. Uh, like this, he said. Now that I have him coming so beautifully, God help me endure. I'll say a hundred Our Fathers and a hundred Hail Mary, Marys, but I cannot say them now. His sin of them said, he thought, I'll say them later. Just then he felt a sudden banging and jerking on the line he held with his two hands. It was sharp and hard feeling and heavy. He is hitting the wire leader with his spear, <laughs> he thought. <laughs> Imagine if Santiago had one of these, huh? <laughs> that was bound to come. He had to do that. It may make him jump, though, and I would rather he stayed circling now. The jumps were necessary for him to take air, but after that, each one could widen the opening of the hook, wound, and he can throw the hook, meaning he'd spit the hook out of his mouth. And after all this work, he does not want to lose his fish. Don't jump, fish, he said. Don't jump. The fish hit the wire several times more, and each time he shook his head, the old man gave up a little line. I must hold his pain where it is, he thought. Mine does not matter. I can control mine, but his pain could drive him mad. After a while, the fish stopped beating at the wire and started circling slowly again. The old man was gaining line steadily now, but he felt faint again. He lifted some seawater with his left hand and put it on his head. Then he put more on and rubbed the back of his neck. I have no cramps, he said. He'll be up soon, and I can last. You have to last, or even speak of it. He kneeled against the bow for a moment and slipped the line over his back again. I'll rest now while he goes out on the circle and then stand up and work on him when he comes in, he decided. It was a great temptation, temptation to rest in the bow and let the fish make one circle by himself without recovering any line. But when the strain showed the fish had turned to come toward the boat, the old man rose to his feet and started the pivoting and the weaving pulling that brought in all the line he gained. I'm tired than I have ever been, he thought, and now the trade wind is rising. But that will be good to take him in with. I need that badly, meaning he's a win. And if he does finally catch this fish, when it's time to go back home, the wind he'll set his sail, and he'll, you know, he'll be able to sail back to Cuba. 
a straw hat. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. The re I'll rest on the next turn as he goes out, he said. I feel much better. Then in two or three turns more, I will have him. The straw hat was far on the back of his head, and he sank down into the bow with the pull of the line as he felt the fish turn. So again, this fish is going around in circles all around his boat. And of course, he doesn't have a stick. He's, the line is in his hand. Okay. You work now, fish, he thought. I'll take you at the turn. The sea had risen considerably, but it was a fair weather breeze, and he had to have it to get home. I'll just steer south and west, he said. A man is never lost at sea, and it is a long island. And he's talking about Cuba. It was on the third turn that he saw the fish first. He saw him, at, saw him first as a dark shadow that took so long to pass under the boat that he could not believe its length. No, he said, he can't be that big. But he was that big. And at the end of the circle, he came to the surface only 30 yards away, and the man saw his tail out of water. It was higher than a big sip blade, and a very pale lavender above the dark blue water. It raked back, and as the fish swam just below the surface, the old man could see his huge bulk and the purple stripes that banded him. His dorsal fin was down, and his huge pectorals were spread wide. On this circle, the old man could see the fish's eye, and the two gray sucking fish that swam around him. Sometimes they attached themselves to him, sometimes they darted off. Sometimes they would swim easily in his shadow. They were each over three feet long, and when they swam fast, they lashed their whole bodies like eels. So as this big, huge marlin is swimming, these two fish are just staying with the marlin. That's what he's talking about there. The old man was sweating now, but from something else besides the sun. On each calm, placid turn the fish made, he was gaining line, and he was sure that in two turns more, he would have a chance to get the harpoon in, meaning he gets him close enough to the boat, he takes his... Now let's say harpoon. We'll get close enough because the marlin gets close enough to be able to throw the harpoon into the marlin. But I must get him close, 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 he thought. I mustn't try for the head. I must get the heart. Be calm and strong, old man, he said. On the next circle, the fish's back was out, but he was a little too far from the boat. On the next circle, he was still too far away, but he was higher out of water. And the old man was sure that by gaining some more line, he could have him alongside. He had rigged his harpoon long before, and its coil of light rope was in a round basket, and the end was made fast to the bit in the bow, meaning it's all tied off. So if you throw the harpoon, you won't lose it. It's got string tied to the end of it. Okay, it's got string tied to the end that he'll be able to pull the fish back in if he does, if he is able to harpoon him. The fish was coming in on his circle now, calm and beautiful looking, and only his great tail moving. The old man pulled him all that he could to bring him closer. For just a moment, the fish turned a little on his side. Then he straightened himself and began another circle. I moved him, the old man said. I moved him then, meaning I hurt him. Okay, now he's... The fish is exhausted. This fish has been gone. It's been go they're both exhausted. They're, they, they're spent, okay? It's been a struggle for both the fish and Santiago. He felt faint again now, but he held on the great fish all the strain that he could. I moved him, he thought. Maybe this time I can get him over. Pull hands, he thought. Hold up, legs. Last for me, head. Last for me. You never went. This time, I'll pull him over. Now when he put all of his effort on, starting it well out before the fish came alongside, and pulling with all his strength, the fish pulled part way over and then righted himself and swam away. So just when he thinks he's close enough, the fish goes, oh, not yet, Santiago, and he just swims away. Fish, the old man said, fish, you're going to have to die anyway. Do you have to kill me too? That way nothing is accomplished, he thought. His mouth was too dry to speak, but he could not reach for the water now. I must get him alongside this time, he thought. I am not good for many more turns. Yes, you are, he told himself. You're good forever, meaning he's trying to psych himself up, talk himself, do not quit now. You can do this. Hang in there, stay strong. On the next turn, he ne nearly had him. But again, the fish righted himself and swam slowly away. You are killing me, fish, the old man thought. But you have a right to. Never have I seen a greater or more beautiful or calm or a more noble thing than you, brother. Come on and kill me. I do not care who kills who. Now you are getting confused in the head, he thought. You must keep your head clear. Keep your head clear and know how to suffer like a man. Or a fish, he thought. I want you to start thinking about this fish in relation to Santiago, okay? We talk about Santiago being a Hemingway hero. We know that, okay? Put some of those traits to the marlin. Okay, we'll 
talk about this in class in the morning. Clear up, Head, he said in a voice that he could hardly hear. Clear up. Twice more, it was the same on the turns. I do not know, the old man thought. He had been on the point of feeling himself go each time, and he'd pass out. I do not know. I will try it once more. He tried it once more, and he felt himself going when he turned the fish. The fish writhed himself and swam off again slowly, with the great tail weaving in the air. I'll try it again, the old man promised, although his hands were mushy now, and he could only see well in flashes. His hands are a mess. He's been fighting and struggling with this fish for three days. He is mentally, like I say, struggling to stay awake to prevent himself from passing out. He tried it again, and it was the same. So he thought, and he felt himself going before he started. I will try it once again. He took all his pain and what was left of his strength and his long gone pride, and he put it against the fish's agony. And the fish came over onto his side and swam gently on his side his bill almost touching the planking of the skiff and started to pass the boat. Long, deep, wide, silver and barred, but purple and interminable in the water. The old man dropped the line and put his foot on it and lifted the harpoon as high as he could and drove it down with all his strength. So the fish is now close enough for him. He takes his harpoon and he drives it into the marl. And more strength he had just summoned into the fish's side just behind the great chest fin that rose high in the air to the altitude of the man's chest. He felt the iron go in and he leaned on it and drove it further and then pushed all his weight after it. So the fish is alongside his boat and now he's just putting all his weight and strength, whatever he could get left, whatever he has left, into the harpoon, into the fish. Then the fish came alive with his death in him and rose high out of the water showing all his great length and width and all his power and his beauty. He seemed to hang in the air above the old man in the skiff. Again, this is Heming, an example of Hemingway's writing. You can see this fish now. Harpoon, it's been stabbed with the harpoon. Now it's just jumping up out of the air. And he just looks at Santiago, just marvels at the size and beauty of this fish. Then he fell into the water with a crash that sent spray over the old man and over all of the skiff. The old man felt faint and sick and he could not see well. But he cleared the harpoon line and let it run slowly through his raw hands. And when he could see, he saw the fish was on his back with a silver belly up. The shaft of the harpoon was projecting at an angle from the fish's shoulder, and the sea was discoloring with the red of the blood from his heart. First it was dark as a shoal in the blue water that was more than a mile deep, and it spread like a cloud. The fish was silvery and still and floated with the waves. The old man looked carefully in a glimpse of vision that he had, and he took two turns on the harpoon line around the bit in the bow and laid his head on his hands. Keep my head clear, he said against the wood of the bow. I am a tired old man, but I have killed this fish, which is my brother, and now I must do the slave work. Okay, we're going to stop there. We will continue tomorrow. Um, it's a great story. Uh, great man, Santiago, Hemingway hero. Uh, we're going to find out what happens next. Uh, in a couple of days, probably tomorrow, and tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be Thursday. And uh, there'll be study guide questions we'll talk about in class. And uh, until then, have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow.